This is RegisteredNurseRN.com and today I'm making a video on cholinergic urticaria. Before I get started, I just want to say that I'm not a doctor and a lot of things that you're going to be watching in these videos about cholinergic urticaria and also on the website has some you know, medical related issues and you never want to try anything, whether it be a diet or a medication or exercise program before you consult a doctor. So it's really important that you talk to a doctor before you do anything that you ever see or hear in this video or on the website, okay? Now my name is Ben, and I've had cholinergic urticaria on and off for over 12 years now. I'm the guy who started the cholinergic urticaria.net website, which I later merged into registerednursrn.com. I did that for a variety of reasons, which I've talked about in, a, in an article on the website, but I'll make a video perhaps explaining that later on. But in this video, I just kind of want to go through the brief overview of cholinergic urticaria, let you know you're not alone, and I'm going to be making a lot more videos over this, uh, over the next few weeks on this topic, so you may want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, or just you can go to the website itself, and every article I'll probably embed the video in the article itself. So, okay, what is cholinergic urticaria? Where does it get its name? First of all, cholinergic just means related to acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a chemical used in the parasympathetic nervous system. It acts as a neurotransmitter. And this seems to be involved with cholinergic urticaria reactions. And basically what happens is whenever the nerve endings, uh, whenever acetylcholine is released at the nerve endings in the skin, that can initiate a house response for some reason. And they don't know a lot about it exactly, but that seems to have a role in it. And that's where it's got its name, a cholinergic. The term urticaria, urticaria just means hives. That's the medical term for hives. So you put them together, cholinergic urticaria, and you have hives related to acetylcholine. It's also called heat hives because basically whenever you become hot, you know, whether it's exercise, whether it's active heating, like exercise or something like that, or passive heating, like if you're just sitting in a room and the air temperature gets hot all of a sudden, either of those things can invoke a reaction in people with this condition, okay? And some of the examples that can set off a reaction, if you take a hot shower or bath, if you eat spicy foods, it can raise your body temperature and cause a reaction. If you exercise or do anything physical, like you're out working or something like that, you can get a reaction. If you have a moment of extreme stress or anxiety, you could get a reaction. If you have some kind of strong emotional response, you know, you're, you're very sad, like watching a movie, you start to cry, you may start to get the prickly, tingly sensation in your body. If you laugh, if you're angry, anything like that can raise your body temperature and, and cause you to have a Hobbes reaction. And even transitioning, like if you're outside walking and it's a cold winter day and you walk into, you know, a store or, you know, your college classroom or something like that and it's hot, you can actually start breaking out in hives and that's happened to me numerous times also over the years. It's not fun. Um, what causes this? I'm going to make a separate video over, you know, a little bit about the causes, but basically they don't know exactly why it develops at this point that I've read. Some research indicates it could be an autoimmune condition to your sweat or your sweat serum. There may even be different subsets of cholinergic urticaria. That's something that some articles seem to suggest. Um, and I think that you know it could definitely be related to just food allergies, things like that. I've known in my own experience, which I'll talk about later, that a lot of the foods I would eat would cause my cholinergic urticaria symptoms to go through the roof. And if I go through an extreme diet where I just eat really bland foods that I know my body tolerates well, then my cholinergic urticaria symptoms pretty much evaporate. So we don't really know the cause and you know a lot of people have some different ideas and theories. I'll talk about that some more later. Now as far as the signs and symptoms, what happens is usually a person with cholinergic urticaria will become hot. Like I said, the reasons earlier could be passive or active heating, but in either way you'll become hot. And some of the things you'll feel, all of a sudden you'll feel extreme itching and stinging or burning sensation in your skin. It can kind of come in waves or random areas. It kind of feels like you're being stung by bees all over your body or maybe bitten by fire ants. I always sort of imagine someone standing there with a little needle and pricking me everywhere on my body. And you can also get red flushing on your skin. That's where, you know, if you ever get embarrassed, your face will kind of turn red. Flushing is basically just that, your skin just turning red from the increased blood flow. 
And you can do that in the areas where you break out in hives. You can also get small pinpoint hives. And I'll, I don't know if you can see the picture very well on this video. I've embedded a small picture, but they're just usually, they were usually small on me. Like if you take an ink pen and just poked a dot on your skin, that's about how large they were. And they usually appear when the reaction happens. And for me, they would usually disappear within just five, ten minutes, sometimes like 30 minutes at the longest, and they're gone. You never even knew that you had hives. You can also get small wheels on your skin. That's just kind of like a raised area of skin where you scratch yourself. I would have like redness when I would scratch myself. It usually wouldn't raise up into a very large developed wheel, but you can get wheels sometimes with this. And you can also have anhydrosis. And what that means is just the reduced ability to sweat. That's a big problem in a lot of people with cholinergic urticaria. They find it really difficult to break a sweat. And I remember the time I had at the absolute worst, I could work out. I mean, I would wear a jeans, a big jacket, turn a heater on, and have it like probably 80, 90 degrees, and I could work out for 30, 40 minutes, and I would... My skin would be bone dry, and I'd be breaking out in hives like crazy, and I just could not get a drop of sweat out on my skin. Luckily now, I can sweat, but that is a big problem for people. Um, as far as the treatments, there are a lot of different treat ways you can try to treat this. Ultimately, nothing really cures it in most cases, um, but you can try to control the symptoms, and I'll go through this a little bit, but again, I'm going to make a video more in-depth on this, but... People take things like antihistamines. Of course, you can always try avoidance, which is avoiding physical activity, spicy foods. That can help in some cases. Corticosteroids, which are usually only used for extreme cases, and I wouldn't recommend them unless, you know, you just have a terrible case and you're on death's door or something. Anabolic steroids have been used sometimes. UVB therapy, sweat or exercise therapy, diet changes, which is the biggest exercise and diet is now the biggest things I'm for, but mostly diet. That's what I push personally, and that's what's helped me the most. But And um, that's the most common treatments, and again, there are more, and I'll go th through that more in depth in another video. It can also, uh, Cholinergic acute care can also be sort of seasonal sometimes. Some people can have it worse in the winter months when it gets cooler, the humidity levels drop and their skin kind of becomes dried out, and they go through those extreme temperature changes from cold to hot. In the summer, some people have a little bit of relief. They can actually sweat even sometimes. And when I had it at the worst, I couldn't get relief even in the summer. But now I can, you know, I can sweat pretty much year-round, and, you know, that's something that you want to keep in mind. Are you going to have cholinergic to carry forever? Are you going to die from it? Well, first of all, it's usually not fatal or terminal, which is the good news. It can be very aggravating and annoying and depressing, but in most cases, unless you've got this as like a side effect of something crazy with your body, like if you've got some crazy cancer or something, then you might get cholinergic to carry along with it. But in most cases, it's just, it's its own condition. It's not usually, usually fatal, and so that's something that I was really happy to find out about. Um, as far as how long you can have this, it really just depends. Some people go their whole lives with it almost. And some people have had it, when I had the forum open, some people had it for upwards of like, I think 30 or 40 years they lived with it. Um, the average duration of cholinergic urticaria, according to emedicine.com study, was seven years. That was the average someone had this condition. And in my experience, what happens, a lot of people kind of have it on and off. They might, it might kind of go away from them. They don't have any symptoms. It comes back. They don't really know what causes it sometimes. And, you know, you can go through periods of your life where it'll go away, come back, go away, come back. Sometimes people may have it throughout their whole lifetime once they acquire it. It most often uh, presents itself in its teens. That's the most common time people will get this. Um, you know, I got it when I was 18 years old. That's when it first popped up in me. Some people on the forum back when I had that, they had children you know, as long as young as like infants practically who have this and they're also elderly people or people, you know, in their 60s, 70s with this. So it's not uncommon at all to have this at any age range, although it's more common or perhaps most common in the late teen years. That's when it usually develops in most people.
And so, uh, let's see, that's, that's the general overview that I'll give in this video. I won't keep you too long, but I'll let you view the specific videos if you want. And again, I'll put a link in the video description of my website as well that if you want to go and check out some of the articles I've written there. But overall, I'm going to make some videos, so stay in tune, and thank you for watching this. Have a great day.